Border Patrol's driving past us and we're just ripping parts off the car. In the world of automotive road rallies, there's a lot of different groups that you can run with. And the one that I frequently go with is called the Dust Bowl. And during our last major Dust Bowl rally, we were kind of suggesting and joking about the idea of a thousand dollar budget rally. The organizers kind of took to this and said, all right, let's, let's do it. And they introduced the Dust Bowl Daredevils. I created a team with a friend, Henry, that lives out in Washington. We had another friend in Texas, Gabe. We all joined up on the team and decided we wanted to find the most impractical vehicle to race a thousand miles through the desert and the mountains ending in Las Vegas. So we purchased a 1985 Honda Accord stretch limousine. When we were shopping Craigslist, Facebook marketplace, we were just looking for something. We were thinking a team van. Then suddenly we came across in California, this derelict forgotten about limousine. And we kind of didn't really believe it because it's, something you don't expect to exist. It just, why would you have this? And shortly after reaching out and starting negotiations, Jalopnik was kind enough to put it out in front of everybody. So the price increased substantially. And when we're working on a thousand dollar budget to purchase, fix, and make a vehicle safe, every cent counts. And thanks to the article, the cost went up about $300 and we purchased our limo for $700. Thankfully, shipping was not included. We arranged shipping and I don't know if you've ever dealt with cross-country shippers, they're a nightmare. Now, as you can imagine, getting shipping quotes for a limousine is not an easy task. Now, granted, it is a Honda limousine, so it's, it's not the biggest vehicle. Lengthwise, it is about the size of a four-door full-sized F-150 with, with the big bed option, so right around 24 feet, not a very long vehicle. But anytime you contact a shipping company, they hear a limousine and they were wanting three to four thousand dollars for a cross country trip. I really didn't want to spend three to four thousand dollars on a seven hundred dollar limousine. It just didn't make sense. So we finally got one company that we reached out to, and I initially shopped it as a 2012 F 150. And they're like, oh, it'll be about twelve hundred dollars. I said, okay, now what if I told you it wasn't that, but it was the same size? And they were willing to work with us and it was $1,300. Finally get the car picked up a week late and it just kept not showing up. And I'd call and I'd call and they're like, it'll be there in a couple days. It'll be there in a couple days. Finally, they call me and say, can you meet us at the shop? It'll be there Sunday, three o'clock. So I drive out an hour to my shop and about two hours later, the truck loads in and the limo is on the top rack backwards, now missing a hood. The hood came off probably somewhere in Texas. So if you see a white 85 Honda Accord hood, uh, let me know, I, I could use it back. One of my most uh, memorable interactions with that shipper was as he rolled up and I said, where's the hood? Um, his response was, it didn't have one. And that's when I very politely showed him the pictures of the owner of his company personally loading it the, on the, that truck with a hood. They tell me they can't unload it because the trailer's broken. So they then tell me they'll be back tomorrow. Well, I get a call Wednesday and I'm told that I have to have a tow truck there within a couple hours because they had to forklift the car off and damage some th stuff underneath. And the repair yard was about to call it an abandoned vehicle even though they took it off the trailer. Call my tow truck driver, he picks it up, brings it to me and I start looking at the glorious purchase that was this uh, limousine. It had a beautiful cloth top at some point. It now is a water retaining nightmare that has created holes throughout the roof, rotted away the entire trunk lining and there's just water and funk everywhere. Also the windows were now stuck down at some point during the cross country trip. They felt the need to roll them down and it is full of water and must and just horribleness. But we start cleaning it, vacuuming out, taking out all the just garbage and spare parts that were piled in this limo, and we start seeing how glorious this thing is. In my research, it was a Marquise Custom Coaches. He had planned to build 300 of these to counteract the wastefulness that was the Cadillac and the town car limo. You didn't need to have such a large vehicle to, to display your opulence. 15 were made, and the best I can find was three a very beautiful showroom edition, one that was a little bit rough around the edges 
and then our beautiful machine. It had a TV, a wet bar, which, which was really impressive. It, it was the most optioned of them all. It had uh, no less than four rat's nests. One of them was current. Rear air conditioning, the divider window, a telephone to talk front to back, everything you want in your limousine. Begin to set apart actually cleaning it and getting it ready to race. Uh, needed brakes, of course, the sitting brakes rot. So he worked and scrimped on our budget and, and, and shuffled things around, got new brakes all the way around. Ordered the finest competition, Amazon rated 13 inch tires that you could find. And by competition, I mean just the cheapest ones that I could put in the cart. It had a carbureted engine with the most ridiculous setup I've ever seen. I bought a kit, tried to repair this carburetor, took it apart to find out at least two other people have tried at some point and just ruined the carburetor. There's no hope for it. So that's definitely gonna destroy our budget. There is a, a Weber conversion kit for these engines. It's $380. We couldn't afford it, but I also own a right-hand drive, beautiful, rare 91 Twin Turbo R Supra. I have a parts rep for a company that adores my car. So I called the person up and I said, hey, if you give me this carburetor, I'll give you my car for the weekend, which they very quickly brought the parts over, took the car and put maybe 50 kilometers because they were so afraid of crashing it, they didn't drive it at all. Worked out really well in my favor. So we get the carburetor on, the engine runs fantastic. Transmission works, brakes are now stopping. It's a fairly well sorted car, but it tends to overheat. And the reasoning is the electric fan switch to turn on the cooling fans to remove the heat doesn't work. We're at the point in fixing everything. We have just enough money for one item, a radiator fan switch or a replacement trunk mounted boomerang antenna for the TV. Obviously we ordered the boomerang antenna. It had to have the look. So we get the antenna on and we put a little manual switch, just to turn on the cooling fans. Everyone on the team knows, turn the fan on, you're good to go. We set out to El Paso, the start of the rally, and they put us up in a five-star hotel with valet only. So now we have this ridiculous limousine with a camouflage camo top on it, it stickers, hideous looking and beautiful, being valet parked. And I very explicitly said, please always Turn the switch on, make sure the fans run. We go to go to our first night's driver's meeting and there's the glorious Honda waiting for us, overheating, no fan switch turned on. So we jump in, drive to our driver's meeting, car's running a little hot. We burp the coolant, work a little bit through it, seems pretty happy. Next day starts, leg one of the rally. One unique thing about our daredevils is we were not allowed to have our cell phones, no GPS, it was paper maps only to find each turn. No direct communication with any of the other teams. We did have one other daredevil team that stuck with us, another Honda Accord. Turned out all, all three were Honda Accords. Um, they have a 66% finish rate. Little foreshadowing, Limo maybe didn't make it. Uh, we start off on our route and it's a hot day in Texas. We're heading west and it just is overheating. Henry was our first driver and he had the attitude of, I'm just going full throttle. If it breaks, it breaks. And I'm like, well, let's back just a little bit, pull it back. And Henry is worse than me with one speed, full throttle. So we start overheating. We pull over, we start looking over what's going on. We're just pushing coolant into the, the radiator overflow and it overheats. So Step one when you're overheating, let's try to increase, increase airflow to the front of the car. We pulled the grill off of it. We pulled, we didn't have working AC, so we pulled the AC condenser. We're on the side of the road, border patrols driving past us, and we're just ripping parts off the car. Load them up in the trunk of the car and set off again. We get moving pretty well, then she overheats again. We find a, a town near us on the map. We go to the town, we go into the parts store, we buy a different radiator cap, we buy some more coolant and ratchet straps. The ratchet straps were for the hood. We decided to shed the hood, unbolt it to maximize all the airflow over the, the radiator that we could, strapped it down to the roof and set off again. And unfortunately, about 30 minutes later, we're back on the side of the road overheating. And it's that point we kind of determined we've cracked the cylinder head most likely from overheating, but it's just a small crack. It creates too much coolant pressure, pushes the coolant into the overflow, got to stop pour it back into the radiator. So every 30 minutes we're pulling over and stopping, refilling it, just doing our best. As the day progresses, we're stopping a little bit quicker. Uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to make this car happy. We, we take the ignition timing on the distributor, rotate it back, trying to reduce power, 
make it a little cooler. It's not working. We're just barely limping along, limping along. Sun starts to set. It's running a little cooler. So we're, we're now pushing to about 40 minutes, getting a little bit further, a little bit further, but obviously this car's hurt. Then it gets really, really, really late. And it turns out we're in Monument Valley, a very beautiful part of the country. We can't see anything, but we're, we're soldiering on. Limo's constantly overheating. We've gone through a copper mine, which had a stopping every five minutes to uh, re-pour the coolant back into the radiator as it just keeps on shoving it out. But thankfully we're recycling. We weren't leaking it out, we were contained. It's nearing midnight. We set out about 7.30 in the morning. We're, we're, we're a little bit exhausted, but we're, we're just still trekking on, trekking on. Finally, we arrive at the Red Hat Inn, 11.59 p.m. Our goal was to just get there right before the end of the day one. Turns out the organizers were just a little bit worried about our well-being because this is the first time they've done this. They have two teams that haven't showed up when everyone else was there at four o'clock in the afternoon. They have no way of reaching out to us because our cell phones are locked away. We are disqualified if we take cell phones out and our radio systems don't quite reach that far. So I'm pretty sure we took about a year off Andy's life. Andy mentally, the organizer, just completely stressed about us, but we pull in, Henry was dressed in his suit as the driver. We were dressed as some just random celebrities in the back and we come out and everyone is like, oh my gosh, it made it. So we, we ended day one hurt and we try a couple fixes. I tried tightening up the cylinder head in the morning. Actually, someone had a torque wrench. We just re took the engine partway apart. I retorqued the cylinder head just as a last ditch effort. The day starts, new rules. The daredevils are to stay together and the organizers were going to be right there with us. <laughs> no more leaving the limo out, out in the desert alone. And we set out, we get three miles in and she cuts off, running hot. Do a couple more things, try to limp it along. We get four miles out and it cuts off again. And the uh, organizers kind of warned us that we were about to hit some very dangerous territory that if the limo died on the hill, it probably wouldn't be good for us. Uh, very dangerous conditions to break down and be on the side of the road. So we uh, got it running just enough to get back to the hotel, asked the hotel if they could keep it to ship it back to us. We were gonna hire a shipper and bring it back out to Georgia because through all the, the fights and struggles and overheating and steaming and stopping on the side of the road, we fell in love with the car. We named her Honda Rousey, kept on taking a beating and moving on. And there may have been a few beers involved in the plans, but we're now rebuilding her. Uh, we want to turn her into the ultimate rally vehicle uh, where it's going to get a lot of body work, um, a lot of body work. The rust has made parts of it just disappear. So we have a new donor car that we're going to cut, weld, restore. Henry works with a company that manufactures a ton of laptops, computers, software. So we're going to outfit it with the highest level of technology that you can possibly have in a nice limo, but this will be in a 1985 Honda Accord limo, we are improving the power plant. We wanted something with a little more power, so we're using a Volkswagen 1.9 liter turbo diesel, and she's being converted to a manual transmission so we can handle some power, and uh, we're expecting 200 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque, a larger fuel cell so we can uh, make, make some good ground, and hope to debut her this year at the 1,000 mile rally, the end of April, which gives us about three months of working time to build it, which is, you know, probably about 10 months too short, but we're gonna make it happen and uh, bring Honda Rousey 2.0 out, no longer a uh, $1,000 budget car, but brought back to life. Great deals on your dream cars don't find you. You have to search for them. And the best way to do that is with autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to search all the main listing sites nationally and uncover those deals you never thought you'd stumble upon. So check out autotempest.com today and see where your next dream car is hiding.